Here we are live this morning from Bethlehem and Palestine. I'm obviously facing uh, the east, watching the sun rise there. There it is, that sun rising in the distance. Beautiful, beautiful morning here. It is uh, Thursday. Uh, Thursday, is that right? Thursday, March 10th. And so we get to talk a little bit about the Forgiveness Challenge. This is Pastor Nathan and Christine. We're live here in Israel, in Palestine, headed to uh, Jerusalem today. I'm going to come inside because it's a little loud on the balcony down there. A lot of traffic. Everybody heading off to work and so be uh, able to be with you through this cool technology that we have here through the internet and close the door behind us, but you can still see that beautiful sunrise. So sorry if I ruin your view of the, there you go. See, I hope you can still see the sunrise there. Get it like, there we go. There's the sunrise. I wanted to talk a little bit today. We're in the forgiving challenge. Yep, we're still in it. What a great time that we've been having in the forgiving challenge. This is day number 10, day number 10 in the forgiving challenge. And in day number 10 of the Forgiving Challenge, this is why I want to go live with you here uh, on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo and our Facebook page because we're talking about the great omission. And Zach mentions in the Forgiving Challenge, which you haven't started yet. We still got books in the office. I heard. I saw it online. So it must be true. Got books available. I know there's over 250 of you doing it. So let's get into this uh, word. And I know some of you are sharing books. So that's incredible. Uh, but we talk about the great omission. And the story that he mentions is from Luke chapter 10, verse 12. Luke chapter 10, um, the, the, and in Luke 10, it's a story of the parable that Jesus tells of the good Samaritan is what we usually refer to. Now, it's only appropriate that this story is for today because I'm here in Palestine and Bethlehem, uh, part of the Palestinian occupied territory here uh, in Israel and in Palestine. There is still today, not in this area, not in Bethlehem, but up by the west, um, I'm not, up, up by the west bank, by the Dead Sea, along the Dead Sea, Samaritans still live today. There's only about 300 of them, I'm told. Now, Samaritans, uh, to this very day, they uh, accept only the first five books of what we have the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, numbers in Deuteronomy, if I believe that's correct, only they have a different version of what we uh, would have in either the Hebrew Bible or the English Bible. And so there's always been this, this kind of division, this separation between Samaritans and, and Jews, and even to this day, uh, between those who continue in that Samaritan line. And there's a lot of cool history about Samaritans in terms of how they just even keep on going because of intermarriage rules that are forbidden and, and the like. In fact, I think I saw one study that said, I think there was three families or, or four families. I, I'm probably wrong, uh, that are basically related in the Samaritan faith, but, uh, it's not just about the Samaritans. It's about what the Samaritan does and showing that response to that man who was going up from Jericho to Jerusalem. I'm not going up from Jericho to Jerusalem, I'm going up from Bethlehem to Jerusalem today. Uh, but what happens to him when he's beaten, lying there half dead on the side of the road, and Jesus asks that question that's been asked of him by the lawyer, who is my neighbor? Who is the person I am supposed to love? And implied in that is who don't I have to love? And then Jesus tells this incredible story about a Samaritan who does the extraordinary thing and helps the person who he didn't have to help, but yet uh, out of his goodness and the grace chooses to help him. And so the story really isn't just about the Samaritan. The story is mainly about Jesus, that this Jesus is our good Samaritan who sees us lying on the road, half dead, beaten, can't save ourselves, can't rescue ourselves. And he chooses us and he picks us and he redeems us and he covers our wounds and he helps us and he sets us up so that then we in turn, by his power, by his strength and might can carry out the callings that God has given to us in the places that we're perfectly positioned to make an eternal difference. And sometimes that means laying aside some prejudices, laying aside some thoughts that maybe we excluded some people because of what they've done because of how they behave because of uh, of what they believe and, and we don't extend that love of God in Christ Jesus to them and so this sins of omission reminds us those things that we haven't done and Zach gives us a great list on that day on this day on page 73 in the forgiving challenge uh, where he talks about some of the different things that we're invited to do as followers of Jesus and, and when we see this list uh, we're going to be convicted we are 
that's just it. Sin's going to convict us. Our sin of omissions convicts us. And when we're convicted of that, uh, we first of all start with that confession, you know, sin, identify the sin and then confess the sin. And uh, there's a saying that he says here too, and from 1 Timothy 1.15, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of who I am the worst. I don't know if you're feeling like the worst one today. Uh, I know walking around a place like this in Bethlehem and then heading to Jerusalem, you can you can just feel the gravity of the whole situation, the gravity of the situation still on the ground here and, uh, and the important work still to be carried out. But uh, wherever you are this day uh, in the world, uh, my prayer that uh, as you are made aware of your sin, that you would confess your sin and that you would know that God is faithful and just to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So. If you're in Jerusalem with me today, I'll be, it'll be awesome to see you. I hope to bring you here someday. I hope, I mean, whoever's watching this video, I don't, you know, my friends uh, around the world and uh, those of you back in the Rio Grande Valley would love to bring you here. Um, there's something uh, powerful about being in the land uh, where Jesus uh, grew up and where he was born. Yesterday we saw Bethlehem. We spent some time there and on the Shepherd's Hill. Last night we had an incredible dinner with the Palestinian Christian family in their home, Christine and I and a couple other people. And and what a blessing it was to hear them share their story and their walk with Jesus and what God is up to in their lives and what it looks like to be a Palestinian Christian um, in this time and this day. A powerful, powerful testimony of faith and encourage us, us in our own walk to shine brightly wherever God has perfectly positioned us. We'll hopefully come to you uh, sometime in the coming days from Jerusalem. We're just doing this on Wi-Fi, so I'm going to upload this right now. Hopefully it'll get up there before we got to get out of here in a few minutes to get our bags out and head out the doors. Right now it's almost 6 a.m. Uh, in Bethlehem, and uh, yeah, I hope to bring you here someday. But more than anything, I hope you know what God and Christ Jesus has come to give you, and that is forgiveness, life, and salvation in his name. So as you see those sins of omission, may you see your Savior, Jesus Christ. So... Angie, this morning with that beautiful sunrise, look, that sun's just about up. I'm going to turn it around, see if it makes a little better this morning. There we go. There's that beautiful sunrise there, headed into the sun rising in the east. So over that way, somewhere is Jerusalem. So we're heading on over there, and I hope to be able to share some more incredible things of being in the land, and hopefully someday bring you... Uh, with me. We'd love you to join us. God's blessing on your day and God's blessing on your day 10 of the Forgiveness Challenge.